back to identity crash here. Today's video, we're just going to continue. Since we've done the walk around on the Super Turbo, we're going to do a walk around on a kind of forgotten farm thing, this impulsive GTIR. We're going to give you how, how we came across the car, the story so far, how it's ended up in this location, um, and what's next for it, kind of thing. And once we do that, we'll upload that. We're down in uh, another kind of storage bit that we have, and this is where these two sit. We used to have an Integra in here as well, and this is where the Super Turbo was in, and then I came up, up to the kind of house to try to get them worked on. So the, the plan is to get through them one at a time, and we'll get one done and finished, and maybe something will take its place in here, we don't know, but... Um, so, we're going to do the video on the Nissan GTIR, and then while we're here, because we've got Super sitting next to you, so we're going to do the video on that, just to kill two birds, and then we'll upload that in a few days' time. They're a completely different contrast to each other. Um, if you've not watched the past videos on the Super Turbo and my introduction video, you can go back and do that. Um, and I'll get you up, up to date and up to speed with kind of where we're at just now. Um, so this is it. This is a this is Pulsar TTIR. My friend used to have one of these cars when I was around 16 and I wasn't able to drive. And I always walked past this house to go to another one of my friends to play FIFA and stuff when I was when I was young and I always looked at it and I always loved it. House was immaculate, I washed it all the time, it was dry stored. Um, and then he sold it on and that was I never really knew much about them, but I never let it go. I always appreciated that car every time I seen it and I always said in the back of my head I'd like a chance to, to get one of them. When I eventually started making more money and working and stuff, it was always a it was always a, a goal to try and pick one up and I was at Binman at one point and I remember doing bins and I walked somewhere, well it was Argo, area of Ayrshire and there was one sitting there and it always reminded me that I, I'm yet to buy one of those. But then we're on a completely different job and stuff now and I think it was maybe four, five years ago in June maybe, we had picked this one up. The story of it was that we were looking for one and you could pick them up relatively cheap. Some of them projects wise, heavy projects, you could get for like a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds and about that kind of mark. They, they were going up cheap. Um, so I messaged a guy through that friend I initially spoke about there. Remember he put me on to someone who he sold this to and he kind of had loads of them in this area. And he's, he's quite well known in this kind of local area for being good with him and having all the parts and stuff like that. So I messaged him through the GTIR forum. I'm not sure if it's still going anymore, but he got back to me and I spoke to him through Facebook. And a couple of months later, he sent me the details of this one. And it was actually sitting at Giant Imports. Now, he used to have this car and it was him that sold it down to Jean Franco, I'm sure. Embarrassing moment here when I started mailing to, uh, to, to purchase this car from him. I couldn't, it was weird the way the name and that came up. And when I got down there, I called him Jean. <laughs> so that was awkward and I apologise if he ever sees this. Um, but he had the car. But it was the other fellas first and he sold them the shell and stuff. So he knew that it was a good condition shell. There wasn't any rust in the usual areas with the turrets and stuff like that. Um, so I started messaging down the giant imports. wasn't then direct, it was very much Jean Franco himself and uh, we got back and forth and basically he had bought the shell in the, in the car and, and that and he had started to build the car himself. So it's got forged pistons, forged internals and stuff like that and we got talking and he gave me a, a rundown of everything I needed. He said he just needed the interior so when I picked it up there was just nothing but boxes and the inside of the, the car. We drove down to Newcastle, we met with him, we started the car up, we had it running and stuff like that, and we were happy, we left the deposit, we came back up home and then we got the car transported up here. So it was, that was that, I had my, my kind of dream shot. And it was a project as well, so it wasn't like just jumping in one drive, I had the chance to, to be a part of the build and finish it off and, and have the car as mine. And I think that's why I've never been able to let it go. There's been a couple of opportunities where I've almost sold it, 
but I can't. I've put. I've not even concluded it yet, but it's still got some of my stamp on it. And we've went through a, a few tough times together. Um, so that was the story. It's it's an opposed engine. It was engine was built by him. Um, so it brought the car up, and I had them feeling that too. But it was very much a jigsaw, and I we no no direction really. So the original failure I spoke about it was local. I'm trying not to throw names out because there's a there's a later story involved in that. But um, he he took the car off me, and with all the bits he was going to build it for me. And it, it didn't happen. It was one of those kind of cases that you hear quite often that you kind of get messed about a wee bit. And he had other things happening. He walked away from home and he had some things happening in his personal life and stuff in the car. It never got done. Um, but during that, there was another one that had came up and it was in close to Glasgow. So we drove up to Glasgow to see it. And it was, it was in full condition. It was all built and stuff, but there was a mechanical issue with it. So we thought we could maybe fix it and use it until my one's ready kind of thing. And when we got there, we had a look around it, it's some nice parts, it's some Nismo struck race and it's some performance parts, a big front mount and a cooler and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't for me, it was just a wee bit, it wasn't for me. So I said to the fella, could you up with the sale, the, the car just wasn't for me at that kind of money. And before I went to leave, he opened the driver's door. And he said to me, look, he's even got the umbrella and popped the umbrella out. And this isn't an umbrella model, that one was. And the umbrella holder just stays in the door check there, in the driver's side. And he put out the umbrella and it was it kind of immaculate and they're super, super rare. Everyone's looking for an umbrella and you can't get one. So I asked him to sell me the umbrella separate. And I was offering him a couple of hundred pounds and he said, no, he refused to sell it. He said, the umbrella goes with the car, so I had to buy a car um, just to get the umbrella. I don't have the car anymore, but I still have the umbrella. I never let it go with the car. Basically what happened then was the two cars were down, with the fella who I mentioned, and so we had to bring the two cars back. So I took them into my brother-in-law who had a, a decent sized unit, and we started, I used, like downloaded the interior if you will, from the white one, and uploaded it into the black one. So I was able to take pieces off and then build them back up and make a, a full interior. So we then kind of had the car. Um, and we had the other one for parts, but someone wanted the shell. So the two of them sat in here like side by side, but I sold the shell on. Um, I completely own the shell and, and we, kept, we kept the original one, the one that was meant something to me, I suppose. So that's the kind of story of Everbrun. We then got the car on the road, the MOT road legal, during Covid, I believe, maybe, just the start of Covid. And it ran for a year, but I don't think I moved a thousand miles in it, and we packed it back up. We've had some few project things, with like electrical issues, we had some interior issues, we had brakes issues, calipers, we had exhaust issues, fuel tank issues, um, vacuum issues, coolant issues, the list kind of goes on. Um, math issues, overfueling and stuff. Um, so we went through the motion with it, and it's gonna sat in here, and we'll get to the reason why it's sitting here just now. I've spoke on a wee bit about this one. I'll try to keep it short, but so much has kind of happened for me in this project that when we get it out, I'm looking forward to getting it back to kind of the way it should be, uh, and we'll see, we'll see what what we do from there. It's kind of. We've got the super turbo and we've got the, the pulsar and that's the kind of this is the, the the baby Godzilla they call it and then you've got I would say maybe the junior one in the super turbo. I don't know if anyone in the UK has a super turbo and a GTI are sitting side by side and the colour of the super turbo will get into that is one of the rarest colours that you can get. So I don't know if I have a kind of collection here that might be sought after or I should keep or we should split them up or we should sell them together or we, should, we don't know. If anyone's watching this and you have one each, please get in touch because I think that's maybe a very, very rare thing to have one of each sitting side by side. So I, I think we might have something special, but it would be nice to hear if anyone else is, has a pair. I'm going to cut it here and then we'll, we'll do a walk around and we'll show you all some set of stuff about the car and we'll give you a walk around its current condition.
Okay, folks, just switch the camera round about. Apologise for my previous video when I done the one with the Super Turbo. We still had the extra mic on and it was probably a bit loud when we switched to this angle. So we're just going to give a wee kind of walk around and we'll show you the general condition and what's still. You can see it's, it's no moved for a while. That was actually new brakes that was put on. You can still see the, the discs and the painted discs. It's just got the original brake set up and that wall. They will need kind of refurbished and we'll get them painted up and stuff. If you look up the condition, you can see the amount of dust. <laughs> the funny thing is, and the bad thing is, there's actually a cover for this car and it's sitting on the passenger side. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can kind of see the reflection of the Subaru, but trust me, it's it's kind of bad. And I feel bad recording this video and seeing it in this condition. Take it up the side, but you can see it's just, it's just a bit lacking and it's just a bit... This was like that kind of when I bought it and it was supposed to have been resprayed and stuff and it's it's not been the best of job. You can see it on the arches and stuff. I mean they're, they're whole and there's no ru ru um, rust or anything but the paint's just it's not been done properly. I put back discs on it as well but there's all need kind of cleaned up and stuff. This part here, I'm ashamed to say, I actually punched the car. And I'm so sorry for doing that but... You've got when it was up at my up at the house where the super turbo was, um these cars are really heavy and we had to push it because I had parts taken off the car and it's a lot heavier than you think and my rage got the better of me. Just take it around. It's got a big crazy, crazy loud exhaust. We have a standard one there. So there's some paintwork to be done, that'll need rectified and but We'll introduce you to Danny. He's going to be our man to to help us out. It definitely looks like a barn find. I always love this, the grills. And when you're sitting in the driver's side and you're looking out, it's it's amazing. It's the same kind of when the Subaru with the big scoop. We had to we had to find and source all the kind of everything for the switches. Everything all works. All the electrics work. We don't have a radio in it though, but all the doors, the locks, and. The seats, the seat belts all had to be put together. There was no dash in it, we had to source a dash. There was no headliner in it, we had to get a headliner. So it was it was hard to piece everything together. And someone's had to go at the loom as well, so if I take you in here, it's got the nab the steering wheel. It's kinda comfy, but I would like to keep everything original, so we might switch that back. It's got hundred and nineteen thousand kilometres. Still reading in kilometres. All the gauges, the bus gauge and the oil pressure gauge and everything all work as well and all the switches. We have the vents there but they don't seat the best so we'll have to have a look into that. But the fan and the stay and everything, we had to all kind of piece it all together for scratch. Oh, we'll get into that later, that wee, that, that wee component helped us a lot. The interior's actually doing no bad to be honest. That's the ECU there, it's going to need to put back in it because it goes in there, it was out for a reason. We had mega problems. Still smells fresh in here, believe it or not. There's a cover I was speaking about. But the condition of the seats never been pretty good and the, the comfy and stuff. Yeah, if I remember how to switch that forward. That's the original mats as well. And as I was speaking earlier, the umbrella's in here. I was kind of going to cut that and put it in this but I don't really want to go messing about with it too much. But trying to get the original window switches and stuff like that was was very hard. That just gives you a kind of condition with the interior. It needs it will need cleaned and, and all that. We did do it but you can see there, down in there, just where people were messing about with the room and stuff. The rev counter wouldn't work and the speedo wasn't working and the the fuel level sender and stuff, so we've had to have the tank out and the exhaust nearly melted the fuel tank. We've got we've got that to show you and stuff as well. I'm gonna take you around to the probably the most interesting bit. I've left that on the on the catch there because down a wee bit Michelle. There's some problems with slam panel and stuff. We did put a different radiator in it when I bought it. Um, it came with this brand new radiator in the box and stuff. So we fitted that, and I don't know if it's messed about with the slam panel and and it doesn't lock properly. Well, it does lock properly, but then you can't get it back on it open, and it's horrendous. 
it's not running just now because we've got the battery and stuff out and there's we had a lot of issues again as I was speaking with the, with the super turbo vacuum issues were horrendous with all this spare vacuum pipe here just here I've just broke that off that, that's how easy the, the, the lines and stuff just perish so we'll need to we'll need to fix that it's got a wee dump valve there pod filter car sounds amazing um, and it's a We've just stuck with the standard top mount on it. Even trying to get like, the covers for underneath and stuff. Uh, sorry, for on, on the top for the grills. I uh, had to buy all that. And the, the, the bad thing is, even though we can obtain... We had brought the cars back for the person that had them, I still had to buy parts off them. So. But it's, it's one of those things that happened. It's kind of got wee, there's a wee Nismo cap and stuff, but you can just see the general condition of the car. There is a big, huge spider in here somewhere, I was told. The, the last time we were down, it ran down in there, so we may need to find it and get it out. We've had to, we changed the power steering pump as well, because when we had it, it had no power steering. We've upgraded the suspension. I don't know if you can see the springs anyway, sorry. We've got, the, I can't remember the exact brand of them, but apparently they're real Japanese springs. You can see again with the paintwork how it used to be the car used to be yellow and then it was sprayed back. We had mega problems with this here. It's all gonna need tidied up. Basically the car was overfueling and it would run and you'd be putting new plugs in it and stuff and it would just within three mile it would get hesitant and it would start what to cut out and stuff like that and the you could see the fueling coming for the exhaust. Uh, we couldn't get the car to run properly basically. And it was all down to that. The math sensor had the wrong one on for the car. So once we got the the new one fitted, that was it. We actually we're still running the the coil plugs and the and the distributor and stuff. And um, we actually priced to get it switched to coil and plug, the, the modernised. But when we because of that issue, but when we fixed it. Um, with the new sensor, it was running fine, so we've kind of left it as, but it might be an avenue now, depending on funds. We don't have unlimited money to throw at it, but we'll certainly do our best. But that's just where we're walking around just now. I'm going to leave it there because we've maybe ran on with this video a wee bit. Might need to edit some of it out, but that just gives you a general idea of the condition of the car, and this will this will come up, and we'll and we'll run through it and get it get it going and get it back to where it should be as well. It'll be another series in the channel, so. Hopefully you guys stick with us and see how it turns out. We'll see you again.